Hi, this is Tim with Shop Tool Reviews. Stick around in a few moments because we're going old school how to. See you in a moment. So this is part two of our three-part series of rebuilding our Rochester Quadrajet carburetor. So this one will only deal with reassembly of the carburetor. Part three will deal with actually installation of the carburetor as well as tuning. But this one will just stick with rebuilding it with the rebuild kit that we bought. And so let's get started. So the first thing are tools. What tools do we need to assemble this carburetor? I keep a pair of long needle nose pliers for fishing out little parts or putting little parts in. Uh, also a little plastic spatula and scraper to keep from marring any uh, soft parts, if you will. And then a few straight slot screwdrivers, one big straight slot screwdriver, and then also a number two Phillips because there's only two Phillips screws in this entire carburetor and it's up through the bottom. So pretty easy to keep track of things. Uh, also with the rebuild kit, I'm sure you'll get an assembly sheet, but there's not a lot of tools necessary. I also keep uh, some WD-40 or a little bit of, uh, of lubricant, silicone, whatever you, whatever you typically use. And then also uh, my air gun to be able to blow things out, blow passages out and make sure things are cleaned out. Also, you may want some like welding tip cleaners or a little small piece of wire to make sure we're, we've got all our air passages nice and clean. But let's get started reassembling the carburetor. So first thing I like to do is actually reassemble this accelerator pump here, this accelerator pump piston, really easy to do. We need to bring the spring down so that little washer can fall out. And then we need to take this old rubber part of the piston assembly and I like to set my old rubber parts aside or all my other parts aside. And then we want to put this new one on. I want to shoot a little lube on this just to make it slick um, so it's not gone on anything. And then that's where I like to take my little plastic spatula and put it over there, those four tongs. It's just pretty, uh, pretty flexible and pretty forgiving. So as you see, we've got that together and now we just need to put our spring back on. And if you'll keep those things close by, you won't forget how they go on and then easily slide this on and now that's reassembled so that spring should actually lock under that little washer there and then we've got our fuel pump or our accelerator pump assembly already finished so we can lay that aside now we want to take the main body of our carburetor here and this is what we're going to start assembly on and uh, the first thing i like to do is actually take my my secondary or my primary jets here and actually install these and I'll take these little pair of, of needle long needle nose here and just very carefully grab the outsides of it and set it in place and I can easily grab my, put my screwdriver on it down there and uh, get it started I do like to hit this again with just something a little wet a little lube just to keep any galling from happening Probably not going to happen, but still it's better safe than sorry, right? So install the primary jets. Snug those up. I don't think I mentioned that I also like to keep a light handy. So it shine down in there. And as you can see, now I've got those, those primary jets in there. And that's where those primary metering rods will ride. So my new float and my new clip. And let me talk about this a second. So number one, this float, when we do adjustments on this float, the only adjustments that can be done is actually bending this. And you'll see a little V-notch right here. And that V-notch is there to actually bend this float. And that's how you actually uh, set the float level on this. So be careful, don't put too much pressure on this. Uh, you, wanna, you wanna be careful with it. And you really wanna leave it kind of in its stock form because it'll probably be close to where it needs to be set. And then we want to take a good look at this clip here. And as you can see this clip, it's like a half moon on one side and straight on the other. And we really want it like that. We don't want this flat side curved, nor do we want this half moon size uh, flat. And so give that a good look over. I've seen applications where this is messed up and it actually caused a flooding situation in a carburetor. It can also cause a, cause a situation in, in any way to actually stick 
that needle in seat so you're either not getting fuel or you get too much fuel because the float sticks and it lets it overflow. So we want to put our clip in that just slides right through. It actually gets held in when we put it in the body of the carburetor. And then we want to take our new needle and seat or our new needle, if you will. And then this needle, again, I've seen a lot of bad applications where uh, somebody takes and takes this little hanger here. See that little bitty wire hanger, if you can see that. And they'll take and try to put it through these holes and hang it and, and hang it on that little piece of metal there. That is not how this hangs. This literally, all it does is goes over the back side of this and literally hangs freely, just like that. Now, when we get it in the body of the carburetor, it will be held in place. But be careful. Make sure you hang that properly and make sure it stays hung on there until you get it down in the carburetor. And then it should be held in place. But I got a little ahead of myself there. First, we need to install the actual seat so we were looking at the needle and here's the actual seat and so we'll go ahead and we'll put this in and again i'll use my little needle nose here make sure your little metal washer doesn't fall off and again i'll just hit this with a little lube and this is where i take my big blade screwdriver and install that Again, you want it nice and snug. You want to make sure you don't, you don't mar up the inside of that because that's where that little needle rides in there. You don't want to mar that at all. So now let's go back to our needle, if I can pick it up. We also we want to make sure we've got no trash on this needle, on, this, uh, on the end of this needle here where it actually sits in the seat. So when you hear of needle and seat, this is what they call for for the knee or this is what they say is the needle and the seat is the actual brass part that we just put in here and this is the needle and seat and that little uh, rubber or nitrile uh, tip there actually seals and keeps the fuel from rushing in uh, when it actually when the bowl gets fuel full so let's go ahead we make sure we got our clip on our float properly and then we're going to go back here we're going to hang this thing off the back side like it's supposed to be done and then very carefully, if you'll get that needle down into that, into that seat, this thing should really just fall into place pretty easily. And there we go. So now we've got it in there. We make sure this clip actually falls all the way down into that slot right there. So as you can see, that little C clip, the flat sides on the bottom, the curved parts on the top, and you should just see it cresting over the top of the carburetor here. Now don't do what I have done and forget to do a step. And as you can see, now there's fuel in the carburetor, the float's floating. Uh, and so basically I forgot a step and in editing, I found out that I never put the check ball in for you guys. So I just wanted to do that. I did remember to put it in, it just didn't get filmed. So. There's only one check ball in this carburetor, as you can see here, this one check ball, and it goes down in this hole right here. There's a hole right beside where, uh, where the primaries, in between where the primaries and the needle and seat is on the right hand side if you're facing this emblem, this inlet. So right over here, you just drop that check ball in. That's where this screw with the long skitty end on it seats down and seats that that ball bearing or that check ball nice magnetic tip screwdriver will hold that screw for you while you screw it in so we've got that in that that needles in fine and then also we want to tweak this we want to or we want to set our float level and so if we'll just press down with finger until we feel it bottom out and then we want to measure from the float here to the top flange of this carburetor. And we're really, I like to set these at an eighth inch. I think they may uh, give you some different uh, measurements depending on your application. Really across the board, I like to, to set them at an eighth inch. As you can see here, my rule here, it comes as 30 seconds of an inch. So two of these would be a 16th and four of these would be an eighth. And so I got this set right at four of them. So that's an eighth inch. That's really where I, I like it to be. So now it's set at an eighth inch and we can move on to assembling the rest of this. Now the next thing I want to do is actually install the primary metering rods. And as you can see here, they're real small on the tip. You want to keep them that way. You want to make sure these things are clean. You don't want those dirty. You don't want grit on them. 
Uh, you don't want anything like that. So you can see here, this goes into our primary side of the carburetor, which is what we were just dealing with here, was setting that needle and seat as well as the float. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that this spring here is either in this hole or in the bottom of this hanger here for the primaries. And again, I'm just going to shoot a little lube in here. And now this is kind of a pain. It's not a big deal, but you just got to fish these metering rods around a little, little bit here. And again, you don't want to put any pressure on them because if you don't get them down there in the jets, you don't want to scar them up either. And it may help to shine a little light down in there as you're dealing with this as well. And then a little pair of needle nose like we have here and there. Now we've got them in. And once you get that in, there's this little plastic cup on the top of, on the top of this hanger here. And that actually gets pressed down in there. And that's just kind of what holds everything in place. And it's not a big deal. That'll be held down as, with the gasket as well as the air horn of the carburetor when it gets down in there. But it should be spring loaded. They should easily go down in the end of the jets down in there as well as spring back up. And now we can carry on. So now we're gonna kind of lock everything in place there. And this should just easily just fit in here and slide in like that and keep that needle and seat in as well as that float. Let's get our gasket and let's look at this for a second. So this gasket not only just sits on here, but also you can see right here, there's some little cutouts for slipping around that, those metering rods, those primary metering rods. Now what I like to do is number one, make sure that I've got the right side here. And it looks like I do, because as you can see here, there's one hole here that actually fits over this fuel slot there. And so you want to make sure that you get that one on the right side, on the correct side, and there's a big hole on this side. So then I want to take this tongue and I want to bend it down like this because what that's going to do first is I'm going to slide that underneath that metering rod. And again, don't put too much pressure. And then you can see once you get it under there, now it sits up under there. And now you can see that you've got gasket all the way up under the, the metering rods here as well as all around it. And then we'll just put it over our, our stud sticking up there. And we should be good to go. So now we've got our gasket on there and we can move forward to actually installing the air horn. Now this is considered the air horn, the top of the carburetor, because really it's where it gets all its air from. Uh, so all these are, are basically places that pulls vacuum as well as pulls, pulls air, pulls fuel. And so these are all things that we want to make sure is clean. So then we can take our accelerator pump and this spring goes on the bottom of the accelerator pump. And then again, it's going to go down in this bore right here. So this really, this biggest bore through the gasket there is where that's going to go. So again, put a little lube on there and put that down in there. And that's actually a tapered hole. It should go in there very easily. It shouldn't hang up and it should operate very freely as well. So make sure it, it actually operates fine before you, before you move on. And now when we take our air horn, the first thing we do is make sure that these, make sure that all these brass tubes actually go easily through the gasket, through the base of the carburetor, and then our accelerator pump should also come up through this hole right here. Make sure everything sits on there flush. So we've got the air horn installed on the, on the body of the carburetor. Now we can start putting our screws in. And as I mentioned, you only have two Phillips screws. And so those, you know, go up through the bottom of the carburetor through the base plate. So we can lay those aside. And then the two taper headed ones actually go through on the primary side here, right under the choke blade or right under the primary blades, if you will, or the, oh, it's the choke, the choke blade. So right under the choke blade, you'll actually see where these flat heads go. And if you take a magnetic tip screwdriver like my sonic screwdriver here, you shouldn't have any problem and you can get those started. So just get all these started. You don't want to tighten any of them up yet when you want to actually tighten these in sequence. So just barely put any snug pressure on it just to start seating that gasket. 
Your big long screws go in the back. So very easy, pretty tight holes too, so you might have to actually screw them into place, especially when it goes through that gasket. And then the rest of these screws are all the same size. These back screws actually won't go on or all the way through until we get our base plate on there and those will actually screw down to the base plate. So let's just get these top ones started. Now once we get everything started, now what we want to do, so we've got the main body of the carburetor really kind of uh, mostly assembled, if you will. And then what we want to do, we want to take the base plate. And so we want to take the base plate here. As I mentioned before, we were really marginal on needing to actually put bushings in these throttle blades or, or you know, where these uh, shafts go through the base plate, but they should be fine. There's not that much slop there. There is just a bit. If there were any more, I'd definitely be putting bushings in it, uh, but they do operate freely. They don't stick at all, and so we're going to leave them as they are. Now, first thing, this little rubber pad here in your rebuild kit, this goes down in the well here uh, in between your primaries and secondaries, so just stick that down in there and then we're ready to put the body of the carburetor on as you can see your secondaries your big ports should line up with your big ports back here so we want to take our gasket we have put our pad down here this foam pad down into the base plate and then we want to take our gasket and put it on back here this is a good good time to point out so these go on there pretty hard or pretty firm i should say so it'll hold those gaskets in place for you and make sure all your ports line up. Everything looks fine. Your screw holes are open as well as all your passages line up. And as you can see here, here's the wells uh, of the primaries and secondaries that typically like to leak. We did not find any leaks in this. I was very surprised. And I tested for leaks with some soap and, uh, and some air and couldn't get it to bubble. So tells me that that's sealed as good as it can be. So now we've got our gasket on. We've got our pad down in the, in the well here, and now we can actually put these two halves together. And as we put these two halves together, you should be able to push it down. You may get a little pushback because of that foam pad that's down in that well, but that's okay. If you can just snugly push that together and you get those halves to mate, then you should be fine now. So it's just a little bit of pressure. You should be able to get this base plate seated with these couple of screws here. And then we can run these back screws in. And now we can snug all these. And we want to go in a circular pattern. We want to go in a circular pattern. And you'll see that in the instructions, but just going to go nice and snug, starting with the front two, and then kind of working a Work in a circle here, three, four, and five up here at the front, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then you'll want to work that again because you're really, you're starting to seat that gasket and you don't want too much pressure on here. You just want a nice and snug. And you may want to come back later and again, check those again, make sure they're snug. You want to make sure your throttle blades operate smoothly. So you can see under here, we still got free movement here. They snap back to place. Uh, they seal properly. So you've still got good movement there. First thing I want to do is attach the accelerator pump lever. And so there's a lever that goes here. There's a pin, if you can see, that we left, all we did was we were taking this apart as we drove it from this side and left it in right there. It's a very common thing to do and it makes it easy to reinstall. So we just take a screwdriver and push it back through as we install this lever. So let's do that. And one thing I like to do when I take these levers off is actually leave the, um, the arm in there that actually goes with that lever. So then you don't have to worry about which goes to where. And, and then it goes down here where where are your throttle cable hooks into this lever here and there's a little hole and so we'll get it in the hole and there's a little notch that we got to line up as it slides through and then we can turn it 
And then we have our lever here. And what I'm gonna do right now is take my nifty little stand I made. I know it's high class, I can, I can, I can tell you like it. This hole right here, I wanna line up so I, can, so I can push that pin back through. All right, so that's all I'm doing here. So I've got it lined up. That pin should push back through. And as you can see here, now that pin's back through and that lever operates properly. And so now we can move to our secondary metering rods. And these are really easy. These hang, again, something you want to make sure of is just make sure these are hanging freely. That there's nothing catching or nothing uh, hanging up. And then they just fall right into, down into those holes. Make sure nothing's harming them or make sure nothing's holding them back from actually going down and just kind of falling into place where they need to go. And they should sit down very easily and then that little bitty screw we have right here should go right there in the top. And that's why I've got this little screwdriver here. Just get it snug. Now we're going to move in. We're going to put in our primary idle jets. You just go on the front of this base plate. Very simple to do. One thing I noticed when we took this apart is that these, uh, these were set at like two turns out, which to me seems a little bit, uh, seems a little on the lean side. I like to see these three and a half, four turns out and that's where I'm going to set them and obviously we'll do some adjustment when we get it on the car but I just want to when I get close to the bottom here I just want to be real careful once it bottoms out don't force it and so half one half two half three and I'm going to leave it at let's say three and a quarter now half one half two half three three and a quarter so I've got both of them set at three and a quarter. Should be a good starting point for, uh, for starting up the car. So, so here's the supply side of the, of the fuel line. Put my plastic washer on here. Our spring goes in there. And that seats that fuel filter against this housing. So we're down to our last few pieces. We've got to put our choke on and we got to put our vacuum brake on and then we're done. So this can be a little tricky on the choke side, but it's really not that difficult. Uh, your little plastic piece goes in here and really it's the only one that it'll fit in. And then you see your cone shaped piece right here on the female side matches up with the male side here. Now there is a little lever in here that connects to this rod right here that allows the secondaries to open where these flat spots of this choke rod goes in. So you have to be careful when you go in here that those are lined up and if, you're not, if it's not lined up you may have to fish around a little bit with this rod to get that to line up. Once you have it in you'll know because when you wiggle this rod it, you can see it moving that linkage there. Now we can put our screw in the choke. And then we need to put our screw rack right here in the, uh, the choke blade. And then all we have to do is we hook up this rod to this vacuum here, to the vacuum brake. And the other end of this rod onto the secondary here 
and then put our screws, screws in the vacuum brake, hook our vacuum line up. And now that we've got the vacuum brake on, we've got our choke on. We don't have the internals of the choke yet. We'll cover that in the next one. That'll really be part of the tuning. But as you can see, all the mechanisms work in the choke housing there. And as you can see, the accelerator pump works. The primaries and secondaries work as long as the choke is off. So everything works in our carburetor. Make sure it works freely. Uh, we've got our, our fuel supply inlet on, and uh, we're really, other than put, blocking off some vacuum ports, uh, it's ready to go in the car. So thanks for watching part two of rebuilding our Quadrojet carburetor. Part three will be installing and tuning. So stay tuned, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Have a great day.